Let's open your Bible, book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the uh, wiles of the devil. For we do not re uh, wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of, the, of this age, against the spiritual hosts of, of weakness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your, uh, your waist uh, with the truth, having put on the uh, breastplate on righteousness, and having uh, showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with uh, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, and with all uh, preserver, preservance and supplication for all the saints. I read up to there. Uh, I started my own ministry in 1995. Uh, since that time, I have thought about this so many times. Am I a really good pastor? Am I a really uh, qualified one for this job? You understand those kind of questions. You know why? I have thought about those things because when I looked at myself, I was not that good pastor and also I was not good at preaching the words, preaching the gospel and leading the church. When I see myself, I'm not a type of the person who, like the boss, I'm not a bossy, right? The follower, that position would be more comfortable for me, right? Following some people, following some, you know, uh, the church or God, that would be uh, better for me. But becoming both and leading the church and uh, leading the people, I'm not that kind of, that type of person. That's why so I thought about this so many times. Am I really good? Is this really my way? Is this really my way? Or many times I thought like I picked the, I took the wrong path and then I got to return, <laughs> I got to repent, or I got to change, I got to jump off from this track and then I got to start a different work. So I've been thinking about I have thought about those things many times and a lot. But whenever I thought about those things, you know what? I couldn't find any answers within myself. Yeah, I was trying to find the answer for all those questions, right? But I couldn't find any answers uh, just within myself. So when I looked at myself in some ways, I think I thought it might be okay, but in another ways, not okay. So I was so complicated, complicated. Brothers and sisters, uh, you got to understand this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Hold on. Uh, 
uh, chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Then the Lord, Lord God took the man and put him in the, in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. God made Adam and then God put him in the garden of Eden. Why? To tend and keep it. Which means there is an enemy. Right? God told him to keep it. God told him to tend it. Which means there is an enemy, right? So someday the enemy will attack this garden and attack this area. So you got to keep it. You got to protect it from the enemy. So in our spiritual life, there is an enemy. Okay? It always tries to attack us. It, try, it always tried to uh, come down us. You know why? The, our enemy, the devil, knows this. Once, if we, once we can stand on the faith, okay? once we could be with God, we could live, we could uh, walk according to God, through our lives, through our footsteps, God will bear a lot of his fruits. So our enemy knows that. That's why it is trying to yeah, destroy us, destroy our faith. Okay? So there is an enemy. It always, <coughs> always attack us. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 8. Verse Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, uh, uh, be, uh, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring, roaring lion. Yeah, our enemy, our adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. And then it is waiting for a chance to devour us, right? To destroy our faith. Even today, our enemy is trying to attack your faith. It's trying to destroy your faith. Do you understand what I mean? So, today we got to think about this part. How our enemy attack us and then how we could protect our faith from that you know, attacking. Okay? So, there's an enemy. It is always trying to attack your faith and then it always uh, trying not, to, not uh, for us to stand on the faith. Let's think about this. In Luke chapter 15, there's a story about the prodigal son. Prodigal son. We all know this story very well, right? Prodigal son, he left his father. And in the far country, he wasted every possession he was given from his father by doing some prodigal living. And when he lost everything, and then when he realized that he was perishing there, he thought like, I got to return to my father, right? My father. But when he thought about going back to his father, he worried about, he was not sure about his father's heart because he knew what he was doing. That's why he thought like, what if my father don't take me? So he thought like, okay, I got to say like this to my father. Dad, I'm not worthy to be your Will it to be called your son, right? Just take me as one of your hired servants. And then he returned to his father, and then he met his father. So before his father, he said, Father, I'm not worthy to be your, called your son. Just take me as one of your hired servants. What was the answer from his father at that time? 
What was the answer? The father didn't say anything. Rather, he called his servants. And then to his servants, the father said, Why don't you bring the best garment and the ring and the sandals, right? And let's be married. My father, my son was dead, but now he lived. He lived. So let's be married. So father gave him the best garment and then the ring and the sandal. What was that? What was that? That was the part of expression of father's heart. Am I right? Yeah, father answered. Father showed his heart through those you know, best garments and ring and sandal. You are still my son. Am I right? Yeah, the ring, think about the ring. At that time, back then, the ring was usually a stamp ring. The ring was the symbol of the successor, right? So you are my successor. So you are still belong to my family. You are still belong to me, so you are my son. So father gave him those things. And then through that, father showed him his heart, his merciful heart. But you got to understand this. In his house, father was not the only one. There's a sort of enemy of the prodigal son. Who was it? His brother. Usually, brother is the enemy, right? In every family. In every family. Jonathan, am I right? <laughs> usually, usually, the brothers and sisters, they are enemies. <laughs> okay, in his house, father is not the only one. There is a, his brother. When his brother saw his father, saw how his father took his uh, brother, this bro his brother was not very happy about it. Let's go to it. It's very interesting. Luke chapter 15. Luke, Gospel Luke chapter 15. Verse 25. Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard the music and dancing. Yeah, the older son, prodigal son's brother, he was coming from where? He was coming back to his house from where? From the, from the field. What did he do in the field? What did he do in the field? Working, of course, working. Farming, right? Yeah, he was coming from the field. But prodigal son was coming from where? From where? <laughs> field? Company? Workplace? No, where? Far country. From where? From prodigal living, right? From wasting everything. Totally different, right? Totally different. Older son, he was very diligent, right? He was very diligent. And even today, he was working in the field. And then he was coming from that field. Then he saw the dancing and music sound in his house. So he asked to one of the servants what was going, what was going on here. So one of the servants said, it's because of your, your brother. Your brother. Your father was very happy about your brother. His return. And then he said, look at here. Look at the verse 29. And so he answered and said to his father, Lord, these many years... I've been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet, you never give me a young goat that I might make 
married my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. Do you understand what he is talking about? Do you understand? What if you were this older son? What would you say to your brother? Oh, Father, I've been waiting for you so long. I miss you. Welcome back. Would you say that? Abi? No? Hey, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Nashika, what would you say to this kind of brother? Are you going to say, go away? Yes? <laughs> Both. Can I trust you? What does it say? Go away. Go away. Look at this brother. He said, Father, you shouldn't do this. He devoured all the possessions with a harlot. Right? And with, uh, by doing some prodigal things. You shouldn't do this. Father, I've been serving you for many years. I never, I never go against you for many years. But you never give me anything, any uh, young goat. It's not fair. It's not fair. Okay. In the house, not only father. Also, there is this kind of brother. Yeah, father's heart and brother's heart is different, right? Be different. Yet his brother, he said, Father, you shouldn't do that. He's not deserved to take this treatment, right? To take this bed the cap, to wear best garment, to wear the ring, to wear the uh, sandal. It's not deserved. And then his brother Let's say, speak to his brother directly. Hey, brother. A long time. How are you? Good? You think you're really good? Hey, where did you get that best garment? Hey. Uh-oh. Ring? Where did you get it? Yeah. Daddy, came. Daddy gave it to me. Dad? Okay. Uh oh, your sandal? Hey, you brother. You think you deserve to have all these things? Hey, don't you remember what you have done? Do you understand? Don't you know what you have done? I know you have wasted everything with the harlot, doing gambling. And taking drugs. I know, but still, you are here eating this bad the cap? No, you shouldn't do that. Go away. Go away. Yeah, this brother is attacking this prodigal son with what? With his behaviors. The way of his life. This is what you have done. This is the life you have lived. And then how could you say you are a son of father? How could you wear those garments? How could you wear those rings? No, no, you shouldn't do that. Go away. Do you understand this kind of attacking? Have you ever heard this kind of, received this kind of attacking from your enemies, from our enemies? Our enemy is always, always trying to attack us with what? With our behaviors. Because when we look at ourselves, we are not that diligent, am I right? I think some of you are very diligent, but not me. <laughs> When we look at ourselves, we are not very honest, diligent. 
We are not very patient to God, right? We are very diligent for our, our desires. That is who we are. That's why the Satan is attacking us with this saying. Hey, how could you? How could you cheer? Go away. Okay. Let's say you are prodigal son. And your brother speaks like this. What are you going to do? So you understand what I mean? You are, okay, so you have wasted everything. And then barely you return to your father. And then you're wearing the best garment from your father. You're eating bedded calf or a steak. And then your brother is telling you, hey, Subi, what's wrong with you? You think you are deserve to have all of this? Go away. What did you say? Cry. <laughs> what would you say? I don't know. Lina, what would you say? I cannot hear you. You're not sure? What did you say? Maybe many of, many of us, we say, yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How could I wear this best garment, right? How could I have this ring? It's good. Garment. Ring sandal, it's good, but not for me. Am I right? Yeah, it's good. It's really good, but not for me or not for this time. Maybe sometimes later, if I could change myself, if I could live a better life, then I could eat steak, I could wear best garment. Then you say, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Then many of us will go away. Okay, let's go to Second Samuel chapter 9. Verse 3. And the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. When David became a king of Israel, he was looking for the someone who is left in the house of King Saul. And, and then through the Ziba, he found one son of Jonathan. Jonathan Mephibosheth, right? Mephibosheth. But he was living in the Lodabar. And then he was lame in his feet. In his feet. You know, the David didn't like the lame, right? David didn't like the lame. But Mephibosheth, he was a grandson of King Saul, which means the enemy of the David. And then also he was the lamb in his feet. But David, he found that this Mephibosheth. And then look at the verse. Verse 7. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. And we will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather. And you shall eat bread at my table continually. When David found Mephibosheth, he said, I will restore everything that belonged to your grandfather Saul. And then, from today, you shall eat bread at my table continually. And from today, from that day, but people said he was eating with David at king's table, right? 
a chess table every day. So funny. One day, most people said was eating at the king's table. Some people ask me, hey, most people said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I'm eating. Hey, most people said, do you know who you are? Hey, you are grandson of the enemy of King David, King Saul, right? And then you are a lame that David hated. How could you, how could you eat at his table? You know, although David said, hey, I'm going to show you my kindness for your father, Jonathan's sake, so you shall continually eat with me at my table. Although he said that, but you know what? Look at yourself. Look at yourself. You're lame. You are grandson of Saul. Brothers and sisters, what would you say? If you are, but people say, what would you say? Would you say sorry? <laughs> Will you go away from there at king's table? What would you do and what would you say? Our enemy is always, always trying to attack us. How? Hey, look at you. This is what you have done. You're so lazy. You're not diligent. You're not reading the Bible. You're not praying for God, right? And you never preach the words. You never even try to preach the words. And then still you think, you're qualified for blessing of God? No. You shouldn't expect His mercy and His blessing. Brothers and sisters, that's how our enemy attack us. When our enemy attack us, how could we protect ourselves? How could we protect, keep our faith Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6. Book of Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. You got to put on the whole armor of God and then with that you can protect your faith. You can keep your faith. Okay, what is the armor of God? What is the armor of God? Look at the verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth. Okay, one of the armors, the having girded the waist with the truth. You got to stand on the truth. You got to stand on the truth. That is the one of the armors. Okay, what is the truth? What is the truth? The thing that you see, the thing that you feel, you think that is the truth? When Israelites came out from Egypt, one day, Moses, he sent 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan. After 40 days, the 12 spies, they returned from spying out the land of Canaan, right? And then when they returned to Moses and to the congregation of the Israel, you know what they said? After 40, day, 40 days of spying, you know what they said? Let's go to Book of Numbers. Chapter 13. Verse 25. And they returned from spying out the land, the land after 40 days. Yeah, 12 spies, they returned from 
spying out the land after 40 days. And then, you know what they said? Look at verse 27. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly, it truly flows with the milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Yeah, it's, it's a really good land, right? As you said, it truly, the land flows with milk and honey. But the thing is, look at the verse 28. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong and cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Yeah, as you said, the land of Canaan, it's really good. But the people who dwell in there, they are very strong. Their cities are fortified, very large, big and tall. Especially we saw the descendants of Anak, which means the giants. Okay, giants. And when we compare to ourselves before them, we are like grasshoppers. We are like grasshoppers, so what? They made the conclusion, we can't come in to that, the land of Canaan. So let's return. Let's return to the Egypt. Look at the verse 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 1. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept and wept that night. When Israel, when all the congregation heard this report from ten spies, all night long they wept and they cried. And then they complained to the Lord, to Moses, right? How could you? lead us from Egypt. Now we are dying here. Now we are dying here. Yeah, 10 spies, they said, we can't because the people dwell, who dwell in there and the cities were there. So big, so strong. But look at the verse uh, chapter 14, verse 6. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of uh, Zephune, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Joshua and Caleb, two of them, they said, let's go in. They are our bread. Why? It's from God, right? It's from the promise of God. But 10 of them, they said, no, we can't. Brothers and sisters, one of the ar armors of God was girding your waist in the truth. What is the truth? Who is saying the truth between two different kinds of, you know, spies? Ten of them and two of them. Ten of them said, ten of them said, they are giants. We are like grasshoppers, so we can conquer that land. Let's go back to Egypt. But Joshua and Caleb said, no, we can't do that. Let's go in. They are our bread. Who is saying the truth? Which one is truth? Their cities are big, tall. Yes, yes, it's true, right? And the people who dwell there is, is strong, uh, strong and tall. Yes, true. They are the descendants of Anak. 
Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it is true. They are, it seems like they are saying the truth, but it is not the truth. Why? Why? In their own eyes, in their own feelings, it seems like truth. But in the words of God, in the words of God, that is not the truth. Do you understand what I mean? What is the truth? What is the truth? What they see, what they feel, is that the truth? No! What is the truth? The promise of God, the words of God, that is true. You got to say amen. Although they look like strong and tall and giant, but still they are our bread. Let's go. Let's go and take over this land. Joshua and Caleb, they are speaking the truth. Do you understand what I mean? The Satan is attacking us with not truth. Hey, look at you. You have wasted everything with the harlot. Look at you. You are lame. Look at you. You are grandson of soul. Look at you. This is what you have done. Look at you. At that time, you know what you have to do? You got to stand on the truth. What is the truth? What is the truth? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. Let's read it all together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. All together. Begin. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. By one offering, which is Jesus Christ, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Through Jesus Christ, through his one offering, he has perfected us forever and he has made us sanctified. Sanctification and perfection that was done by one offering. Am I right? At the same time, at the same time. So we could say, I am sanctified. When we say, I am sanctified, sometimes some people ask us, are you sanctified? You never commit sin? Of course we sin, right? Of course we commit sin. Of course, we are not perfect person. But still, we could say, we are sanctified. Why? We are standing on the truth. Am I right? We are standing on the gospel. We are standing on the gospel and the truth. That's why we got to say, I am sanctified. And then, and then our enemy is attacking one more attack. Okay, okay, I understand. But look at you. Are you perfect? Are you perfect? Don't you know what you have done? I know. But still, we got to say, we got to stand on the truth. I am perfected forever by one offering Jesus Christ. Am I right? Yeah, that is what we have to do. That is the truth. You got to gird the waist in truth. That is the armors of God. If you can say that, our enemy will disappear. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Book of Ephesians chapter 4. 
Know why? This is very important. 27. Or verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. Look at verse 27. Do not give place to the devil. Brothers and sisters, the devil is trying to attack, trying to destroy your faith. At first time, it is trying to take one spot, one place, small place in your heart. Then and that it will destroy you completely. So do not give place to the devil. If you accept only one saying, one thing from the devil, you know what is that? You are giving the place to the devil. If you accept what devil said, you know what that is? You are giving the place to the devil. When devil said, hey, look at you. This is what you have done. So God is not blessing you. God is not helping you. If you say yes to that. If you say yes to that. You know what is that? You are giving the place to the devil. Don't give any place to the devil. So at that time, when the devil, when our enemy said, says that, you got to count back. Yeah, you can say that, but I know what is the truth. I know what God has done for me. I know I'm still perfected forever by one offering Jesus Christ. If somebody asks you, are you still justified because you... Although you commit sin every day, if somebody asks you, what would you say? Yeah, I'm not justified. I'm so sorry. Are you going to say that? No. Yeah, I know I'm, yeah, I could make a mistake. I could commit sin, but still I am justified forever because of Jesus Christ, because of one offering. You know what that is? When you say that, that is the, that is giving the place to the Lord. You shouldn't give the place to the devil, but you got to give the place to the Lord. You got to let him work in your life. Brothers and sisters, could you change yourself? How many times, how often did you make decision? Did you make decision? Oh, I got to wake up early. I got to do this from today or from this new year, from this new month. How often have you done that? So many times, right? So many times we made this season, so many times, but it didn't work. So could you change yourself? Could you change yourself? No. You know what? Sometimes in, uh, in my house, Sometimes the electricity is not working properly. But the thing is, I have no idea about electric bill. And all my family, we have no idea about how that electric thing is going. Okay? The only thing I know is when I turn it on, it works. <laughs> but turn it off, it's off. But although I turn it on, it's not working. At that time, I don't know what to do. But I'm not worried at all about that at all. You know why? Because I have really, really good friend. Good friend. You know who he is? <laughs> you know who he is? Michael. Sister, hey, Susan. Susan, hi, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, Susan's husband, Michael, is a professional, right? So whenever I call him, 
he comes to us, and then he fixes, he fixes everything. Although I have no idea about that, but it doesn't matter for me. But I can call. Hey, Michael, can you come over and help us? Okay, Pastor, don't worry. I'll go on which day and what time. So last week, he came to us and he fixed something in my house. Although I cannot fix some electric, electricity, but no problem at all. Why? The Michael can do that. Can you fix yourself? Can you change yourself? No. But who can do that? Jesus Christ can do that. God can do that, right? So we got to, the only thing we got to do is what? We got to let Him work in our lives. For that, we got to give Him the place. We got to give the place to Him. You shouldn't give any place to the devil. You got to give the place to our Lord Jesus Christ. How? By accepting, by believing what He says. But once you accept what the devil says, that is giving the place to the devil. From that moment, the devil started to work in your life, in your faith, and then it will destroy your faith, your life completely. Do you understand what I mean? Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Shield of faith. My dad, do you know my dad? He was a pastor of this, our mission, right? But before he became a, the pastor of our mission, he belonged to other mission, which was started by American missionary. The name of the mission was the mission of the shield of faith. <laughs> So whenever I read this, I read this, it reminds me, my dad, taking the shield of faith, taking the shield of faith. Above all, the shield protecting, right? Your faith, with your faith, you can protect the darts, the arrows of our enemy at any time. You cannot give up the truth. Am I right? At any time. At any time, we got to speak the truth only. By speaking in the truth. At any time, we can, we can protect our spiritual life. Brothers and sisters, this morning, this is what I want to tell you. As long as you can stand on this truth, as long as you could have the shield of faith, as long as you can speak the truth with your mouth towards our enemy, he will go away. And then God will start to work in our lives. Amen. We are justified. Amen. At any time. We are sanctified. At any time. We are perfected forever. Amen. At any time. This is the truth. And this is our shield. With this shield, 
we got to protect our faith, and then we got to destroy our enemy. And then we'll see how God works in our life.